1944 brought one of the most critical points in the European theater of war. Allied forces were pushing back the Germans, but didn't have enough supplies to continue moving their armies. The entire operation depended on a daring mission, which was known as the Red Ball Express. June 6, 1944, D-Day. Nearly 200,000 troops of the Allied armies establish a beachhead on the coast of France at Normandy. It takes weeks of heavy fighting and heavy losses until the Allies are ready to move in to reach their goal of taking France back from the Germans. Six weeks after D-Day, Allied forces fighting in Normandy begin a massive offensive. They must push beyond the bitterly contested beachhead and keep up a momentum across France and into Germany. With the beaches cleared of enemy activity, the Allies bring in more men and supplies, including a unit to handle delivery and distribution. But the travel routes are still vulnerable to attacks by the Luftwaffe. The Germans also have supply units to rush ammunition to the Normandy battle zones. We were all veterans, all experienced. So I was in the 21st Panzer Division, yeah, 24th Regiment, and when the invasion started, the 6th of June, 1944, we moved from Falais to Cain. Allied Air Force planes locate and bomb German positions along a narrow front at St. Lo, their next location to attack the Germans with a powerful drive by infantry and armored units. But to continue at this pace, the supply convoys must keep up with the fighting men. Moving through the towns, American troops are on their guard for German snipers. Even a dead German is enough to cause a soldier to proceed with caution. As the Germans retreat, they set up holding positions to slow down the Allies. We didn't have much uh, problem because when we move, we move mostly in a forest or in a like a field you know where you say where the plane can't spot it out we always went we didn't move on the main roads no no we was moving on a, on a cover up plate you know the german army was getting weak see we lost so many planes we lost things we didn't have uh, much if we called for the help Nobody came. Spearhead units fan out through the French countryside, capturing villages in the south. But it is not without facing fire from a tenacious enemy. In just two days since the operation started, there is a complete breakout from the Normandy beaches. The Americans advance 25 miles in 36 hours. As a soldier, you don't think about the retreat and things. You just do what you have to do. You don't think about the retreat. That's a war. You can't even imagine you in a fighting, yeah? Fire from all over the place and things. You only think about yourself, your life, you know? 
if I'll be here tomorrow. See, you don't think about the retreat and stuff like that, no. General George Patton is appointed commander of the new U.S. Third Army. A tough and controversial combat leader, he is the ideal choice to push the limits of his fighting force. He sends a strong spearhead force toward the heart of France. Within three days, his armored units have conquered as far east as Le Mans, rapidly catching up with the retreating German armies. On August 6th, the Germans launch a desperate counterattack to cut off Patton's unstoppable army. But confusion and lack of communication make the goal unachievable. The American, you know, was breaking, coming close and close, so he was backing up. And I started say they took over like a can, sanglo, and we was backing up. They surround us and we have to give up. It was very rapid, very rapid, because they were running away from us. We overran them. That's what we that's what we did. We overran them. The Germans are pounded unmercifully by air bombings, artillery, and armor. They retreat in stunned disorder through what becomes known as the Falaise Gap. The commanders desperately order their troops to hold open the gap long enough to get their panzer divisions through so they can take a stand at the critical location of the Seine River. Eight infantry and two panzer divisions are captured by the Allies. Over 49,000 combat troops manage to escape. Now Patton's army races to the Seine. I was a battalion motor sergeant. We had them on the run five or six miles out of Paris, and they just left their equipment and everything and, and, and took off. I'm telling you, they just, they threw down their weapons and ran. The infantry that we took with us just continued on and took, took the prisoners and we uh, repaired the roads and the bridges and that autobahn because that's what we were going to use. Finally, the Germans in retreat reached the Seine. They're in no condition to fight back. When it's hard to explain when you're on a front line, the soldier is on a front line because you know it's danger, yeah? You pray, you are afraid, it is tough, you know, front line. We didn't have much peace. Numerous spearheads surge across western France, at times gaining as much as 50 miles in one day. Chartres and Orléans fall, and beyond the Seine, Paris. I wonder how the French greeted us. They loved us, they really did. They would give us their last aid, which we never seen but we wouldn't take anything off of them. They really, they went all out for us. They went